Hello, and welcome to Film Slam Strain's Post Film Conversation for D Stream. My name is Eric Zayer, and I'm an instructor of film, media art, and communications, as well as moderator for this conversation. We are very pleased to be joined by the director and three subjects from the film. First, we have um, um, the director, um, Vopolis, and he directed the film. Hello, Paul, and welcome. Hey, Hello. Hello, Mikey. Okay, good to have you here. And we have a, a couple of the subjects here, uh, three of the subjects here from the film. We have um, Allison, and we have Kulsen, Jason. And uh, this film was actually shot in, um, you know, 2020, and it is finally making its way around for us to have screened it, and other people have screened it as well. But things have changed a little bit um, from the film. So I'm just gonna ask everyone just to um, introduce themselves and tell everyone um, your position now, what you are doing now um, since the, the documentary. Um, we know Paul, you're still director. So I'll just hop on over to Allison, if you can just um, introduce yourself and tell us what you're doing now. Hi everyone, so happy to be here. My name is Allison Game San Vicente. I'm currently a superintendent with the Toronto District School Board, and a superintendent means I'm part of the leadership team. At the time of the filming, I was a central principal doing work throughout the system on a variety of pieces. Happy to be here. Welcome, Allison. And next we have um, Kulsum. Kulsum. Yep, that's right. My name is Kulsum Anwar, and I'm an English department head and teacher at um, the high school featured in the documentary. I'm still here at Westview and I'll be teaching grade nine this afternoon. Oh, great, thanks for joining us between classes. <laughs> and finally, um, Jason. All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Toe. Uh, I currently uh, serve as a, co a coordinator of secondary math and academic pathways. Um, and so my job is really part, most of it is to support this kind of ongoing work of inclusion and de-streaming, uh, specifically in math, but, um, in, you know, trying to, uh, make this happen in all the other subjects as well. So glad to be here. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Jason. Let me start off with you, Paul. Uh, this, you know, it's a hot button topic. Is this something that you read about in the media, or is this something that you approached um, to do a documentary on? You know, so there's a there's a couple different facets to that, I guess, but the the, the simplest answer is, um, so my uncle was an educator for several years, and so I was kind of uh, intimately aware of a lot of these issues, but not so much all the in-depth research and all of the movements towards de-streaming. So it was something that I was passionate about. It was also something that in the process of filming, I realized I had been streamed and didn't didn't even realize it. Um, and uh, and on top of that, uh, but I, I would say really it was it was primarily that I was approached by two two researchers who gave me this the information for the documentary. And at first it was it was it was supposed to be something almost like I would say more like a video. And then I think when we realized, you know, all of the people that could be involved and more importantly, the students, which I thought was the emotional heart of the piece, um, that's when we realized, okay, this is more than just like a video that breaks it all down and break, you know, gives a overview of streaming. I, I, we thought that it would be more impactful if we actually got to follow the students. And I think that the goal was to follow them even longer. But of course, you know, there's certain there were certain limitations, restrictions, we were doing it during COVID. And, you know, uh, but I think that we were able to follow them for, you know, the year plus of the school year. And I think that it ended up um, sort of, you know, being close to what we really intended, which was to show the emotional journey as well as the information sprinkled in. Oh, great. That's um, Thank you for that uh, recap. So you mentioned you were streamed. Were you part of the um, applied or academic? Um, applied, no, well, I was streamed into applied and I didn't, I didn't. I, so I, I moved around a lot as a kid. I, I went to 10th grade in Toronto at the school called uh, Sir Sanford Fleming, which I think has now been, uh, I think it's now been shut down. But at the time, because I can't, even though I spoke perfect English, um, like, I mean, I was born in, in Canada. But because I lived in Panama for several years, when I came back, they kind of just assumed that I didn't speak English. So they were even trying to put me into ESL and they ended up putting me into applied math. And um, even though my grades were all great in Panama, 
and like when I went back to Panama, actually, I graduated with really great grades as well. But since there was something happened in that, luckily, I went back and forth. And so it didn't end up affecting my university pathway. But like, had I continued on there, I think I would have been an applied everything, even though I was, you know, excelling in any other school that I'd been to. So and I didn't really understand that at the time. I didn't really even like care. I was I wasn't living in my, my parents were still in Panama. I was living with my grandma. My grandma barely spoke English. So she was just like, you know, it, it wasn't even a thought. We were just like, OK, great. I have to do less math. OK. Yeah, yeah. It, it's exactly. Interesting. So you're just part of the education system. You trusted the education system. But yeah. Allison, you're part of shaping the education system. So, um, you know, you're participating in this documentary. You had to give your views on you know, the whole process. So tell us a little bit about what you've done behind the scenes in terms of um, this whole de-streaming, de streaming and a little bit about yourself. Were you streamed? Did you grow up in the education system? Well, I mean, I think similar to Paul, um, I was also streamed in the movement from grade eight to grade nine. It wasn't called applied at that time, but they put me just automatically in those courses. And I didn't think twice. Um, I was really blessed to have two older brothers who were already in secondary school. And they said to my mom, listen, she can't go there because she won't be able to go to university. My parents who were immigrants uh, from St. Vincent and then England, they didn't understand the system. So they listened to my brothers and went to the school and said, no, you need to move her to the other stream because she might want to go to university. And it was such a critical moment. I always wonder if I didn't have the, my older brothers who said, no, no, she can't do that. Like what would have happened and where would I have landed? Um, because somebody would have taken my ability to go to university away. I became a teacher and um, a guidance counselor. And then I was in this position where I started to stream kids. And it wasn't until they came back from high school and said, you know what, miss, we can't just go to a different stream and we can't just go to university. It isn't true that I really began to think about it. And I was, um, blessed to have the opportunity to do some writing and a book that was published in 2014, uh, which really looked at um, structural racism and oppression and how streaming was a contributor to that. And uh, I met wonderful people like Monday Gala and Kulsum and Jason, and we started what we call a collaborative inquiry, where we took a group of schools in an area that many would say students aren't achieving, and they generally go into the lower streams. And we started in, an in inquiry. What would happen if we gave them all the most rigorous courses? What would happen? And we saw what happened, which is they could achieve it. Absolutely. For that answer, let's move on to Kulsum. Kulsum, you're on the front line. Uh, you've uh, been uh, at the uh, Westview for you know, number of years. So you've seen the process, you've seen the impact that you had. So can you give us a little bit about your background in terms of your education and how you made that shift from streaming in terms of teaching to the whole din streaming process? Yeah, so I, I was lucky in my teacher education. Um, you know, one of my professors was one of the researchers, uh, Dr. Carl James, um, behind a lot of this work. And I, I read Stacking the Deck when I was um, in university, which is an important book that looks at um, how, how kids are streamed. So I, I had some um, opinions about it when I started teaching, but I had very little experience with the streams because most teachers are in um, the higher stream, they're university bound. And so we've never spent any time in those streams. And then I became a teacher and I was teaching grade 10 applied English and, and college English, et cetera. And I, I was really um, perplexed by what it, what it was supposed to be. So right away, I just thought it was like a strange kind of place where, um, you know, we just, everything was just taught in a watered down way. There was no like real way, nothing was really being done particularly for these students. So the streams never made sense to me, but on the front lines, I wasn't, um, you know, making that systemic change. We, I had to wait I had to wait for Allison to come, <laughs> you know, so um, I remember being at Westview and, and the principal asking me, you know, me and a few other educators, like, do, do you think we could run a D-Stream pilot here at Westview? Like, do you think we could D-Stream English? And I said, of course, like, of course, we have to try, like, because teachers who teach in the applied streams know that students are not thriving there. 
So why not try something else? It's got to be better. Well, good. I'm glad that you were part of that. And making a shift, part of uh, uh, being an educator is being able to um, pivot and adapt to, you know, the needs of the students. So I'm glad you were able to do that, have that way of thinking. Um, move on to you. You are one of the ones that made the shift. You went from the classroom or more into um, a more administrative role. So you're kind of seeing this from both sides. So first of all, tell us a little bit about your educational background and about this, and then tell us about the shift from being in the classroom to more of an administrator. So um, I, I, you know, was also part of the streaming process, but I was like, I think Kulsum also, um, you know, always put into the, the higher streams. And so I never really knew what was happening until I became a teacher and like Allison and Kulsum, um, we, you know, we were part of this, this, this machine that was separating students into things that were really more convenient for us as teachers, as opposed to something that was serving students. And, um, and I think I mentioned, you know, in the, um, in the documentary, I mean, about my own experience moving students and, um, it, and, and I didn't think anything of it. I mean, the system communicates to us in, you know, formal, informal, you know, implicit, explicit ways that it was okay to separate students based on, um, how we perceive them. Um, and, and it wasn't until Allison and her, uh, colleagues, uh, shared information with me in a, in a, you know, in a professional learning session, I was like, oh my goodness gracious, like I am part of the problem. And it took me a little while to come to terms with that. And from there though, it's, you know, once you see that you can't unsee it anymore and it's either you kind of bury your head in the sand and just pretend like everything's okay, or you actually have to step up and do something different. And, uh, so it was like, yeah, so, uh, I was part of that collaborative inquiry, like called Suma and Allison. And it was just, uh, an amazing thing. Once you see that, once you remove this like glass ceiling off of the potential of students that they can really step up and, and, and show you what, what they're, what they're made of. And it was just a glorious thing to see. And so I knew that when I saw that at our school at Westview, that I needed to, I needed to get that out there to more people. And, uh, and so Allison, uh, graciously, uh, allowed me to, to do that with her. Um, and, uh, yeah, we got it to, you know, from four schools to 50 schools, and then it got to all of our schools and then, and then our province, um, picked up on it, um, and realized that this was something, you know, eventually that needed to be done. And, um, you know, it's, it, it I hope that people, you know, when they watch this uh, film, see that like change happens in small places in in one school. Like you can in your little place, wherever little corner you are in education can change um, can change everything. So uh, it's been wonderful to see. But I mean, we still have a lot a lot more work to do. Absolutely. You do. Thank you for that. So um. Paul, um, just kind of talk what close to this documentary briefly. Um, you could have gone a number of different directions. You could have taken it from the standpoint of a student and just taken us through that process of the student and so forth. But you know, you chose to focus on you know the educators and just the overall introduce us to the overall um, issue of, of um, uh, streaming. So tell us a little bit about why you took this approach and. And, and and making this documentary. Sure. Um, so, you know, I feel like I like to think of independent documentary filmmaking as sort of the art of limitation of just like, well, you know, with the resources that I have and what I can do, like, what is the, what, what, what can I pull off here? And so a lot of this was, you know, recognizing, okay, we might only have the resources to go see, you know, Kulsum like once every two weeks, you know, for every so often or, we might only have the resources to go see Alice in the one time, so we better get everything that we need. And, you know, and, and not to mention just the sort of the continuity of like, okay, well, if we did go film with Allison again, and we did figure that out, like, is it going to be weird that now there's two interviews? So honestly, a lot of it was bred out of just the knowledge that we had so much information to cover and 
there was a lot of sort of concern of like getting too much footage and then there was concern of like making it too wide or too verbose or I think that we were always sort of guided by the desire to make it to, to try to include the, the classroom as much as possible and that's why we opened the scene in the classroom and you know honestly if you ask me now I probably wanted to be even more in the classroom with you know even even just some of the, some of the interviews kind of peppered in like as sort of almost like voiceover or narration you know um, but honestly I think that the film itself it, it worked better to focus it on the educators and then have the examples because I think that there was so much information that had to be covered that like if we if the only other way I think we would have done it is if the streaming was sort of like um almost like this like subtle implication it was would, would be the only way that I I think we could do it but knowing that we kind of went in and I sort of I also felt that I I felt the duty to like really make sure that we captured you know the actual information of what was happening and almost like the history of what was happening and so I think that was part of why we ended up, you know, sometimes with documentary, it's like you 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 go where you feel guided to intuitively and then you figure it out in the edit afterwards. And so that was a big case of us being like, oh, what if like Allison's interview is the backbone of the, you know what I mean? So that was so that's kind of one of those things that we were like, um a lot of it was like, okay, we wrote it out and then how do things fit within it? And I also have to give a lot of credit to my editor because he really helped me sort of like hone in on like what 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 did not need to be included or what needed to be or what was most important or so I give him a lot of credit he really I think there's a moment in any documentarian's career for every film that they do where they're just like is this anything like did I get have I captured anything not the subject matter but just the you know like did I actually capture anything like what you know so I have to say you know I had a couple of moments where I was just like okay like do I have what I need and um you know I'm very grateful to our editor, Mike Gallen, who who helped me, who helped me with that as well. Right. Uh, yes. A, g a great job by your editor. This easily could have been a feature. I um, mean, you have three dynamic subjects here. You could have even delved more into it. Just talking today, here and there, you know, stories as well, and then focusing on some students. So, any plans you think you might make a feature out of this? Well, you know, if anyone watching wants to give us money for a feature, we will, yeah, we will definitely do a feature. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you hear that, everyone. Paul may be <laughs> contacting you again. So yeah. the final round of questions for the subject. So Allison, um, in hindsight, looking back, you've seen this documentary and, you know, you know you, you're working with some colleagues that are purists. They, you know, strongly believe, look, we do need to stream. This is the best for the students and you happen to be on the other side of the fence. So looking back on this documentary and what you've said in it and so forth, the future, uh, what do you hope this film does? And, you know, you voiced it on camera, you voiced it off camera. What are you hoping this film does um, in terms of um, the education system? No, I, I hope this uh, film is part of some of the information that actually changes the education system. I believe that uh, teachers, society have beliefs about young people and those, those beliefs is what cause young people to enter certain spaces, get stuck in certain spaces and not get to certain spaces. So I think we really need to think about schooling differently. We need to understand that there's structural racism built into schooling and if we really want a society where everybody has access, then we have to undo what's been done and build it differently. So I hope this contributes to the thinking around uh, what education should look like, because it's the thinking that got us into the mess. So I figure the thinking can get us out of the mess. Well said. Well, well said. And, um, you know, yeah, education is about change. You, you have to continue to evolve. And speaking of evolving, Kulsum, how has your teaching changed over the years, knowing that you know what you know? And what do you think your teaching will be like in the future? Um, I, I, I like what you said about teaching education being changed because, um, you know, uh, 
you know, my, my teaching practice changes all the time. Like, and I look back the way I used to teach, you know, I've had so many transformations over the course of a, you know, 18, 19 year career. Um, and so I think teachers as teachers, we have a responsibility if we're doing things that are, if we say we're traditional or we're purist or whatever, like we're, you know, we're doing it wrong. Um, so, you know, we really do have to, we do have to keep changing. Um, and so, you know, early on, like sometimes I would do like a little ad hoc de-streaming. I'd, you know, before the systemic came, change came, I would go to students. I'd be like, you know, you know, I really think that you should um, come into this higher stream. I really think you'd be capable. And then I'd go to guidance and like make it happen, you know, and sometimes it would work and often it, it wouldn't work. Like the student wouldn't be successful. Um, and because you couldn't, I couldn't ensure that where they were going was going to support them. So the teacher who was going to receive them in that higher stream, were they going to just, um, you know, gloss over their needs? So, you know, as systemic change happens now as teachers, we really do have to, um, you know, teach differently, uh, make sure that we're not um, gatekeeping within our daily practices, because um, that goes on a lot. Um, so we really are like, this is happening in a systemic way. It's, it's been amazing. All of the inquiry that, um, you know, I was, I was going to call Allison the mother of de-streaming earlier in my mind when you were talking, I'm like the mother of de-streaming. Um, <laughs> and, um, like that was really important. And now like the baton is in the hands of like the classroom teachers to, um, to make sure students benefit, actually benefit from it. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you for that. And, and, and Jason. You know, you made that shift from the classroom to the administrative side. Any thoughts about going back onto the front line to, you know, continue to affect change? Or do you feel like you can be just as effective in the position you're in now? That's interesting because um, I was in a in a position that I was in um, uh, just a few years ago. And then I went back uh, to Westview, um, you know, having done some of the work with Allison. And so I was back into a classroom and uh there was an instance where i was um uh slated to teach um students with uh into mild intellectual disabilities the lower stream math and knowing what i know i went to my principal who's monday gala who's also in the in the film and i and i said no i'm not doing that like we're we're going to teach uh these kids um the highest levels of math that we have and of course he jumped on that too and so we made the phone calls we needed to parents and we um, you know, then we, then we did it, we, you know, we were working with students that have always been said that they couldn't uh, do grade level math. And we were just like Colsum, we had to, you know, I had to evolve and, and, you know, have some new tricks up my sleeve. And that really helped me to go back into the role that I'm in, uh, because there's, there's, you know, you know, when, when Allison talks about systemic racism, um, you know, trickling, there's, there's other discrimination that's happening, systemic ableism, for instance, that uh, continues as, as, as a facet of streaming as well. So, um, you know, there's different dimensions that we still need to uh, face, and especially in mathematics, um, it's very much like an ability um, uh, based sort of uh, feeling, right, that goes into uh, that, that, that environment. And so we, um, yeah, so it's really important that, you know, I, I really enjoyed going back and working with Kalsum again um, and uh, learning still and then bringing that back to a wider audience. Um, so I enjoy the yo-yoing of going um, from like a big picture back to, you know, where the the, the rubber hits the road and, and the important work that Kalsum and other teachers are doing. Um, but, uh, you know, I, 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 there's still so much to do up here. Uh, well, I, I hate to say up here because I really think it's more like, uh, you know, teachers in schools are the, they're the tree. I always say that they're the tree because you see it, right? Like parents and students see education and I'm more of like the roots. Like I feed, I feed the, the, the teachers that, uh, you know, that need the, the, the support and the resources, um, but there's, uh, you know, uh, I always think about and dream about, you know, what would it be like to go back and, and you know, try some things out again. But we'll see. You know, uh, there's still, I still have some years left. Eric, is, can I add another point? Well, please do. Oh, thank you. Uh, first, I just want to say when the, the work began in Toronto District School Board, as much as I love being the mother of streaming, there was a, there was a full team of us, um, the equity department, uh, my partner, Ramon San Vicente, we had system leaders, uh, Jim Sparopoulos, we had research on board, Rula Anasasakos and Jillian Parrott. 
and we came as a team. And I think what's important to note is when we want to do something different in education, it comes with significant opposition. And if we didn't have different positional power levels of those supporting the work, it never would have happened. Um, working with Kulsum and Jason and Monday was a dream because they made a decision to use their power differently. So the other piece that I would I would say to anyone watching is anybody in education, doesn't matter what your identity is, you have power. And we have to make a choice to do something differently. And while it looks amazing on the film, because Paul is a master, Kulsum and Jason and all of those teachers and principals that chose to do something differently did it on their own time and in opposition to many, no change happens easily. So to all of those out there, find a friend when you engage in the work because you need a friend and um, use your power, make a choice. How, how do you want to use your power? And there's always support when we're doing the right thing. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. I have one last question for all of you to answer this real briefly. And I've got this question from the documentary. Instead of asking, what do you see yourself in, you know, whatever, age 34, I'm asking, what do you see yourself in one year from now in terms of the whole streaming process or your personal um, endeavor? One year from now, what do you what do you see happening? I'm throwing it out to everyone to answer real briefly. Anyone can go first. Sure, I'll, I'll hop in first. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you, Eric, and thank you to the Cleveland International Film Festival for, you know, allowing us to come on here and to have, you know, the educators. It's, it's a joy and an honor for me to have everybody come and, you know, speak about this and be celebrated for the film. Um, for me, um, in one year, I think I'll, I'll be making feature films. I don't, I mean, you know, unless, if I can come back and make a documentary at Westview, that was always my dream, honestly, was follow one kid through four years of Westview. That was what I wanted to do. Um, but that takes a lot of time, a lot of resources, but maybe one day. Yeah. So, but I think next year I'll probably be making a feature, a feature film. Great. Great. Who's next? As you say, don't all raise your hand at once. <laughs> I can go next. Um, I think in a year from now, I want the work to continue. We have sustainable change. So we have a structure of no streams in particular subjects. So I am hoping that we have structure around how do we teach effectively in those classrooms. I have the gift as a superintendent, I work with five secondary schools. And uh, I really want to work quite intentionally with those administrators around how are we doing the de-streaming so everybody is successful because we can restream in a classroom if we want. And we need to prevent that from happening. So to make it uh, have a little bit more teeth, if you will. Excellent. Maybe I'll go next because I want Kulsum to have the last word. Is um, uh, Exactly. I think uh, to, uh, again, Kulsum uh, said it uh, very eloquently is that um, access is different than acceptance. So just because students have access now to the highest uh, streams um, freely without barriers. There's still barriers, though, that can exist once they are in that classroom. So the work that I try to do, and you know, and and I think we're getting a number of people on board in our team to support this, is to just make sure that classrooms are actually inclusive. Because you, they, again, just because you can step foot into uh, uh into that room, that doesn't mean that you're automatically accepted by. Uh, you know, teachers or 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 the the learning environment. So that's the work ahead. Also, thanks for giving me the last word. Uh, word, uh, Jason, it's my buddy Jason. I always try to bring him back to Westview. Actually, real him in. Um, so I think a year from now, um, you know, I've just been very blessed to um been to have been working in DStream spaces for about se about seven years. And I was at a conference recently um, that was a provincial conference with Jason, and there were a lot of people um who are just who are new to DStreaming within their boards, and um they they are really hungry for um. Uh, you know, to know, you know, from from firsthand accounts of of like how do how do we do this? And so I hope you know I'm going to continue to be teaching in classrooms and being able to share that uh, those stories and that 
kind that that experience um, with other other people um, who, when they hear like, "Oh, you've been doing this for a while," realizing that we can do this. Like, if you've been doing it this long and you're still standing, um, anybody can do it. So, um, I'd I'd love to share those stories um, with other people um, and just you know teach grade nine. Wonderful. Paul, Allison, Kosum, Jason, thank you all so much for joining us and taking time out of your schedule to share with us some very insightful information. I wish all of you the very best. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And thank you to our audience for joining us for this important and invigorating conversation. For more information about upcoming film festivals, please visit us at clevelandfilm.org. I'm Eric Seiler. Thank you.